Welcome to the Dr. Gundry Podcast. Okay, when's the last time you woke up feeling energetic enough to skip coffee? Huh? When? Or relax enough that you don't crave that glass of wine after a long day of work? When was the last time that happened? Well, if you're like most, there's a good chance you look to things like caffeine, a sugary snack, or even alcohol as a mood booster. But what if you could conjure up the feelings of a caffeine buzz, blissful calm, or a happy, peaceful state of mind, substance-free and with the touch of a button? Well, my guest today says that you can. That's right, he says thanks to the latest mood stabilizing technology, you can choose how you want to feel. He's Scott Donald, entrepreneur and CEO of Happy, the first wearable device that uses electromagnetic signals to guide your mood. And the best part, it's backed by tons of research. Happy's even been referred to as the Netflix for feelings. Wow. And today Scott and I are going to talk all about it. We'll discuss the science behind Happy the importance of interacting with your emotions on a daily basis and how you can take control of your mood to unleash your full potential. And you might notice that there is a weird looking thing around my neck with this kind of, oh, I don't know, uh, touchy-feely symbol glowing. And uh, Scott right now is remotely controlling everything I am telling you. Uh, no, that's not true. So Scott, Welcome to the program. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. I am listening to you now, Scott, and I want to follow your orders. Now, that, that's silly. Okay, now I've actually been using this device for myself for about a week now, and maybe, Scott, as we go along, I can give you some of my feedback. But it's fascinating what you've come out with, and I got to tell you, I found out about this from my good friend Dave Asprey. And Dave knows that I'm nearly as crazy as he is. As he is. I don't want to go that far, Dave. Uh, and Dave introduced uh, Scott and I. So before we take a deep dive into the device and how it works, tell listeners a little bit about you. You have quite a few successful businesses. Where did this crazy idea of happy came, come from? Well, I wish I could take the credit. Um, I, I do not uh, hold all the patents. Uh, our parent company does out of Seattle, Washington. Their, their name is Emulate Therapeutics, if people want to go research everything they're doing in this drug signal space. Um, but I'm an entrepreneur, so I love solving some of the world's biggest problems. So I've got the largest school fundraising franchise in America called Apex Fun Run. We teach leadership and fitness to 4 million elementary school kids all over the place. Uh, we've raised hundreds of millions of dollars. We're solving that problem. Um, we're building a banking app for kids to learn financial literacy, millions of kids all over the world. I love solving that problem. We're, I, I love building uh, comics with some of the world's top names. So I just love solving problems. Um, this opportunity for Happy Technologies, H-A-P-B-E-E, -E, for anyone interested, which by the way, I think it's slash Gundry, is we'll give a gift to your whole audience at the end of this. Um, All right. But it's important to know, I didn't invent this. There's, there are nearly 40 patents, I think 38 patents worldwide. There's $80 million into this technology. And I was one of the first investors um, about 15 years ago. That so long ago? Yeah, so uh, 14 PhDs and in scientists, including uh, Dr. Kenneth Ferguson, the man who led the team to create Cialis, um, as well as uh, Dr. Mike Butters. Uh, they are the world's leading brains on electromagnetic frequency and, and how the body works. And uh, they came up with this technology over the last 15 to 20 years. Uh, they started in 2003 out of Seattle. I was one of the first investors, believe it or not, because one of my relatives did their taxes. I'm not joking. We, it was all undercover. It was all under wraps. Nobody knew about it. They were working uh, in complete confidentiality in their labs. Um, as you can imagine, this technology is absolutely revolutionary. And 
my uh, uncle told us about this and we uh, and how they were helping people in the cancer space. And they're, they're in FDA trials for brain cancer patients, helping them out with glioblastoma tumors. And I just, I couldn't resist. I, I invested hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's all I had at the time because I believed in it. I believe that they are on a process to cure cancer amongst many other things with this technology. And that was that. Um, I really cared about it. And so I've known about this technology for a long, long time. It wasn't until the end of 2018 that they approached me. I had built all these other companies and they approached me and said, look, Scott, you're, you're younger. You, you know how to build business and tech and consumer tech and apps. And, you know, I've got 500 employees in my other businesses. And they said, we're scientists in our 60s and some in our 70s. Why don't you build something that can take this to the greater consumer market to help people feel more energy or better sleep or more productivity or more focus or relaxation? And I, uh, I took one look at the idea and I said, this is exactly what it has to look like. And here we are two and a half years later. So wait a minute, you're not saying that by me wearing this right now, I am curing myself of cancer and I'm going to do great in the bedroom. Uh, I'm not, uh, you're not <laughs> saying that, right? No, no. <laughs> this is similar technology, but this is not the signals that we're giving you in our app. This is, so you have to look at it this way. This is very important. Our parent company, Emulate, they are doing the medical pathways with the FDA. Okay. So they're in FDA three for brain cancer. Um, they worked with hundreds of patients. Uh, they're now going into pain. They've had incredible results in their preliminary pain research. Um, and then our side is more the consumer side. So Instead of you paying 80 grand for this through an insurance or a physician for a medical claim, we're working on just relaxation, more productivity, more energy, better sleep, those kinds of things. And we're um, imitating the effects of certain molecules, right? Like a cup of coffee or an espresso or a happy hour drink or a sleep aid. That's what this technology can do. All right. So, so okay. So what kind of impact do you want happy? Uh, to have not only on individuals, but on the health and wellness space in general. Yeah, so we're, um, we have a huge vision. Uh, we want to have over a thousand different blends eventually that can uh, imitate whether it's different types of coffee or, or happy hour drinks or teas or, uh, and then have routines for people, a workout routine, a sleep routine, a hike routine. Here's my email work routine. Here's my, my flight. If I'm traveling for four hours routine, you know, I want the effects of the CBD on my lower back for my aches and soreness. I want energy, at, you know, at the end of it to wake me up or whatever. That is our dream. And, and we think that, you know, we've got 5,000 customers already loving this, um, absolutely loving this technology. And what we've seen so far is, they're sort of saying this is the future of mental health because if you can get these moods and these altered states without putting any potentially harmful substances in the body um, and or, or getting addicted to your phone and staring at your phone and swiping social media all day, if you can go about your day and, and feel better and feel great at the click of a button, that, that's a huge win for a lot of people. So whether it's addiction recovery, people that are, you know, uh, we have huge partnerships with, with war veteran uh, organizations using this um, for their stress uh, and anxiety. We have moms using this for laundry and errands and, and work. A bunch of entrepreneurs using this. We have my favorite story is uh, Dan Sullivan, the great Dan Sullivan and strategic coach. They've, and they serve about 20,000 of the top entrepreneurs in the world. Last Christmas, he bought one for his entire staff, so like 150 units for every single one of their employees to give them this product uh, with lifetime use. And he personally uses it about 15 to 16 hours a day for wow. relaxation, for focus, for calm, on click, click of a button, no drugs in your body. And his team absolutely loves it. And so they're using this. They said it was the best quarter they've ever had. That was, that was, we're, we're, we're building a case study right now with, with strategic coach because he told me that personally, he said, you gotta, you gotta understand my team absolutely loves these, these devices. They're wearing them throughout the day during their coaching calls with family time before workouts to help them to get better sleep. He's like, it's the best investment we've made in our people. All right. So, so 
All right, so now everybody's going, wait a minute, you know, uh, th this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And as anyone knows who listens to me, sliced bread is not good for you. But anyhow, so how, how, does, how does this work? Uh, I mean, you just pop it on your neck or, or wrap it around your head. Uh, I could show you, but I won't. Uh, people, I'm, I'm wearing this device around my neck, those of you who are listening. Uh, all right, how does it work? Explain, explain the six different settings. In fact, anybody who is actually watching this, I've got my phone open to the app and I've got the six different settings and I want more. Uh, apparently you're gonna have 200, but that's too complicated. So how, come on, how, how can you make these wild claims? Okay, so. Uh, luckily, I don't make the claims. The scientists do. Ah, so, okay. Uh, th this is the the premise here. Um, Dr. Ferguson and and Butter and Dr. Butters and his, their team, they they had this crazy idea. What if we could emulate the uh, the resonance of a drug onto your body? What if it has to do with kind of covalent and non covalent bonds? I don't want to get too deep into the technicals, but what if we can? Uh, we, we like nerdy stuff here, so don't worry. Okay. okay. Well, this was their idea. And, and honestly, it was, it was Einstein and Richard Feynman first hypothesized this, that all things are connected at a subatomic level through frequency, through sound. It's, it's how our bodies communicate, frequency and resonance. I mean, we're, we're, that's energy, right? Inside your cells is DNA. Your, your DNA is made up of atoms. And guess what that is? Protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's just energy transfer. That's how your body communicates, okay? And that's how many substances and chemicals communicate with your body when they dissolve. So they thought, what if we could imitate these sort of these non-covalent bonds in the body? So a simple way to explain this is ibuprofen. If you take ibuprofen, it dissolves. It's basically sending electrons to your cell, to your, to your protein receptors on your cells and causing a response. It's triggering a response in the body. And so they thought, man, what if we could actually listen in to these to melatonin or caffeine and, and see if we have a, see if it pull, throws off a wake? And what if we could record that and play it back? And that's what they ended up doing. They, they found this magnetometer technology that the Navy has been using for decades. And magnetometer technology is the world's most precise um, electromagnetic frequency recorders. Okay. In fact, the Navy uses these little propane tank looking things to figure out where all the nuclear subs are throughout the Pacific and the Atlantic. That's, that's what they use this technology for. And our scientists basically said, maybe that's precise enough to look internally at some of these drug molecules and, and give us a reading. And that's what we're doing. So they got their first reading back in 2005-ish, uh, 2004, 2005, and um, they've been innovating ever since. And now they're going, you know, they've been in clinicals for um, cancer research um, because they got a signal from Taxol, which is an off-patent chemo drug. Um, they tried a signal for rum, believe it or not, um, which is in the labs. I've tried it many times. It's very pleasant. Um, but it's the idea is... If you could impact your cells with these free-ranging electrons and cause a specific shift or a specific impact, your body thinks that you have a little bit of this in you. So instead of having the calories, the toxins, or even smoking things or taking pills or drinking way too much coffee or way too many happy hour drinks, whatever, you could get these subtle responses, which are great little mood changes throughout your day through a click of a button. There you go. All right. So you, you've got six different settings now. And explain, all right, explain why these six. Okay, so, well, there's a lot here. But <laughs> honestly, when I started Happy two and a half years ago with my team, we had one big shot to start recording a lot of compounds okay, and chemicals. And these were the six of the first nine that we asked to be recorded. And our goal was don't just give a sleepy signal, right? Which comes from the magnetic signature of melatonin, 
right, and adenosine, but mostly melatonin, which is a sleep regulator to help people. We didn't just want to have one use case. We wanted to showcase a platform, right? Not everybody needs help sleeping. Some people sleep great. And God bless those people. I wish I was one. Um, but there's other things that we wanted to showcase this technology doing. So we wanted to um, imitate a couple of cups of coffee, right? So how could we get a caffeinated signal? And that's our alert signal in the app now. So that one gives you a slight boost of energy. I was playing it right before this, this um, interview, actually, for about 15 minutes. Um, it's just a little bit elevated heart rate. You're a little more excited. You're definitely beat it in. People like it before workouts or big meetings. Um, and then in addition to that, we, we wanted to figure out a muscle relaxant, right? Um, if we could give you the effect of, of CBD without anything in your body, it could be an incredible home run to help a lot of people. Because a lot of people don't want to put things in their body, right? And so that was that's our relax signal, okay? Um, our focus signal, that one I do if I'm doing deep work. So if I'm doing a bunch of emails and I want to be super productive, um, our focus signal is a nootropic, okay? It's, it's a focusing agent. It, it, it's triggering nicotinian receptors to help you and other things, but to help you stay focused. And so that one is hugely popular for the work world. People that are in meetings or emails or writing books or studying for college, that's the big signal there. So now and wait a minute. Okay, so I've got my focus on right now. So what you're telling me is I'm smoking uh, a six pack, I mean, a, a pack of Marlboros right now. Is that, what, is that, is that what happening in, to me right now? Well, you're not getting carcinogens. You're not getting tobacco. You're not getting any toxicological side effects than you would ingesting anything. That's, that's the beauty here. You know, I know a lot of, there's a lot of products out in the market right now that are, you know, metformin and nicotine products and, and tincture sprays. And that, that all they're doing is they're trying to give you a focused, uh, a limited time focused uh, buzz, focused calming agent. And that's what we're delivering over a signal. So there's nothing in the body to digest. There's nothing to metabolize. It's a very subtle um, but effective signal that helps people with focus. So that's why we call it focus. Now, we're going to be putting the, these signals together, creating blends very soon. So we're, we're excited about towards the end of the summer, we're going to have a whole world here that we're opening up for people. But right now, you just choose what you want based on the time of day. Okay, so what's the difference between focus and alert, which is another one of your settings? That sounds yeah. kind of almost the same. Right, um, and it does sound the same. Like focus and alert, the adjectives are, are similar, but the, the chemicals are very different. And so alert is, is a caffeinated signal, caffeine-based. So that one is like a couple cups of coffee. In fact, a lot of people, they wear that right when they wake up, or if it's two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm a little groggy, or if I took a little nap or whatever, this one just wakes you up pr really quickly and gives you just an extra boost of energy. It's like a Red Bull without the sugar. Um, and then the focus signal is, again, that nootropic focusing uh, agent, almost like a nicotinian response. That's what we were going for there. So it's not like a jolt of energy. It's a, uh, it's a focusing nootropic. And so your brain is more active than maybe your body having more energy. Dave Asprey and I have talked that uh, most of the world's great achievements came under the stimulation of coffee, uh, nicotine, and alcohol, uh, the, that combo. And I, I must say, I, 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 I agree with him. Um, so are you thinking of, of that cocktail in, in this device? Is that one of, uh, one of your uh, mixtures? Yeah, G give me a few months and we're gonna start introducing blends. So yes, we, I haven't talked about this yet, but our happy signal. Oh um, yeah, the happy it, signal. Yeah, the, the happy signal, it is basically um, one and a half to two shots of, uh, of alcohol. So it, there's no taste or no smell, obviously, but it gives you a little bit, you know, the flushy feeling, little euphoria, takes the edge off. It was the very first signal they got other than the cancer work. And um, a lot of people use that a lot. It's a very fun one to come off the day, 
five o'clock, six o'clock at night or watching the baseball game. It's a nice, relaxing. I, I actually saved 50,000 calories last year in 2020 by playing that signal. And so instead of, and I like drinks, I like alcohol. I'm not against alcohol, so I'll, but I'll have one drink and sip it slowly over a few hours instead of three or four, right? And so it's, it's, it's powerful. It feels like three or four when you do them together, but you can replace it or enhance. Now, wait a minute. So if I'm out to dinner or at a cocktail party, am I going to start kind of giggling, laughing very loudly like usually happens? Is, is that what's going to happen to me? I hope not. We, we've had a wide range of responses. Right. Some, people, some people, they put it on and it takes an hour to feel anything, right? Because there's an entrainment factor with all of these signals, okay? In fact, we have a money back guarantee for everybody because we want to make sure everyone enjoys this. So some people return it, but the problem is they only do it for like five minutes. Like, I don't feel anything. Well, you have to, your brain has to start to recognize these signals and how they're influencing your body. And so it might take three, four, five sessions of a half an hour to get them. Now, most people get them within the first 10, 15 minutes. And some people, like I mentioned a minute ago, are very sensitive. And so, yeah, they will feel like that at a bar if they're playing the signal. We've, I've personally seen many instances where people are like, yep, too much, I'm, I need a break, and they'll just turn it off, and within 10, 15 minutes, they're back to normal. And uh, yeah, so there's some people that respond very sensitively, some people are, they don't respond strong, most people are in that middle range. So that's why we're working on these blends to help people that want more of a response or less of a response, that's our future. All right. Now, I jokingly mentioned when we started that, you know, you were you were manipulating my brain remotely. Um, and is there a worry? People are going, well, wait a minute. I'm not sure I want you or this device to take over my emotions. Uh, those are my emotions. And, you know, they're mind dog on it. Um, what say you? I, uh, I see this as more of a, an engaging device to help people in their life. So it, it's not a device. First of all, I can't control your mind. Okay, I'm not, I'm not like a remote control pressing buttons to make you go out and walk into the middle of the street. That's not what the technology does. Just look at our technology as basically giving you subtle effects of compounds and, and, and molecules, drug molecules, without anything in your body, right? Think of it like that, okay? So if we can automate a couple cups of coffee or a a happy hour drink, or at least, at least let you have one or two cups instead of three or four or something like that. That's all we're doing here. This isn't mind control. But at the same time, you know, we push back a lot and we say, look, an altered state is not a bad thing. People like to do meditation to reach an altered state. People eat certain foods to help them stay in a high level in an altered state. Okay. People do, um, they exercise, they, that sleep is crucial to put you in a specific state. It's not wrong to reach, and to want to be in the best peak state, okay? We're just trying to be a tool in the tool belt to get people there faster. If you could click a button and help yourself get into one of these states faster and do them with meditation, do them while you're sleeping, do them or before bed or, you know, that's, we believe that that's a win. We, we want that to happen. I see a future where that's a good thing, not a bad thing. So are, are we going to have a silly Simon button? Are we going to have an Iowasha button? I mean, come on. What are we talking about here? Oh, you're kind of quiet oh, here. Got to text <laughs> lawyers. Uh, <laughs> so what I can say publicly, because I, you know, we are a public company. We went public last year in Toronto. Now we're in the U.S. and Germany as well. Um, and as a public company uh, exec, I have to be careful. So. All I can tell you is, is it possible? Yes. Um, do we have them in our labs right now on our animal studies and blinded tests? I cannot confirm or deny. Uh -huh. All right. That's happening. But I can say that we have over 30 different chemicals and signals we're working on right now in our labs. So just for everyone listening, because this is where I always put on my science skeptic hat, because this is what I did when I started. I brought in my top four closest PhD friends and doctors and scientists and just said, beat this up. I don't want to take this to the world until you guys give me the check mark here. And so they poured over all the peer reviewed journal entries, the studies. Um, they tried it themselves. Um, they, they demanded placebo controlled blinded studies, which we did at the beginning of last year, which were incredibly 
powerful and, and amazing to watch and successful. If anyone's wondering, you can go to our website to see it. Um, we, they wanted to see it work on animals with blinded lab techs at a third party CRO, right? So they really, really beat this thing up. And so, you know, this is, it's an important thing to mention, like everything that we do is not just safe for you because do no harm is all of our scientists number one credo, right? It's been tested on mice. We've had over 900,000 hours of playtime now with thousands of people and thousands of animals over a decade. Okay, so the research is, is deep here. But we, every signal, we also do studies on them. So we, we, we try to trick you, right? Like I'll, I'll click play on you, not me or whatever, our third party, our scientists. And they'll click play and they'll say, look, um, Dr. Gundry, it's either on or off or it's alert or it's sleepy. Why don't you just play it for the next 20, 30 minutes? It's going to blink like normal. And then tell me what you think it is, right? And that's the first thing we want to know is, is it actually without suggestion or placebo going to have an impact on people? And that was what we do with most all of our signals before they come out to the world. And so that's where we were successful. And we were able to tell alert from sleepy, focus from relax, calm from alert. Um, the only one that didn't pass muster was relax and sleepy, which is a CBD or a melatonin, which to be honest with you, that's almost like, is it a Merlot or a Malbec, right? I, I can tell the difference. My team can, but we've done this a thousand times. Uh, a blinded new person who's only tried it maybe a few times, it's difficult to tell. So they could tell if it was on or off 100%, but they couldn't tell if it was relax or sleepy perfectly. That was like 70% success. Huh. All right, so you've had, I mean, the, this uses electromagnetic frequency, right? And yep. everybody knows, and I write about it, and Joseph Mercola writes about it, and Dave Asprey writes about it, how mischievous EMFs are. And yet, I'm bombarding myself with EMS even as we are speaking. So why do I want to do that? I, why should I trust you with this? <laughs> great question. In fact, I've had great conversations with Ben Greenfield, Dave Asprey, Dr. Mercola, and everybody about this. So uh, it's very important to kind of understand there's difference. There's good EMFs and bad EMFs, right? Your brain puts out EMF. Your heart. Any any electrocardiologist will tell you that. Yep. So there's good. There's good. I mean, that's how your body communicates. Everyone needs to understand that. Like, we shouldn't shut it off because that's literally how our cells communicate. Um, but there are a lot of bad EMFs too, right? Our product is near the sound floor. Okay. So. For start, first of all, the output of that of our happy uh, wearable is between DC and 22 kilohertz, which means, for those who don't know this, that is one thirty thousandth of what your cell phone, the average four and five G cell phones, put out. Okay, one thirty thousandth as much. So we are near the sound floor. It's so quiet; it's inaudible. You can't hear anything. And then it's very important to tell people that we're actually creating like a white space, like a white noise. We're, we're blocking out other EMF to play a very, very fine, very, very subtle signal. In fact, the less, the better we're finding because your body is so sensitive. And it's just driving a little bit of a change, just like um, a, a drug molecule would, would do in your body. That's all we're doing. And so is it is it safe? I mean, we've got all of the safety studies, all of the pathology workups, all the animal testing, nearly a million hours of playtime over the last decade. We, we're always checking for safety. We've had zero serious adverse events in, in over a decade, including the FDA cancer studies, including that, putting taxol onto people, the signal for it. And so we are very big on safety and we put ourselves in the good EMF category, the ultra low side of this, um, that can actually support your body and support cellular function and support these altered moods. And so that's that's sort of my main answer to people. It's it's hard to explain to people why some are good and some aren't, but what you want to avoid is carpet bombing your body with a bunch of uh, strong EMFs that are coming from your outlets and your Wi-Fi and your cell phone and satellites and because we just don't know, right? It's not ionizing potentially. 
But these things are, you know, not only are they 30 to 50,000 times as strong as anything we're going to give you, but you, we just don't know what's going to happen if you have your cell phone on your head or in your pocket with Bluetooth on, with data on, pinging a million satellites every day. You just don't know. And so my, my response is always be safe, right? I can tell you that our signals are much safer than putting certain drugs in your body too much, right? This is a big addiction recovery product. We, we have a lot of companies using this. People that are we're on benzos or, you know, they want to cut back on alcohol or they're smoking there. They want to stop. They want to secede. There's a lot of people who really find this beneficial because it's much more healthy than putting something in your body that can hurt you. So if I'm wearing this at the beach in Santa Barbara, will a bunch of dolphins come up and talk to me? <laughs> I haven't tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> you've mentioned this. Uh, I, I, one of the things I like about animal studies is that animals uh, cannot be influenced by a placebo. Um, thank goodness. Um, so uh, people, I'm sure, say, well, that's, this is all just a placebo effect. If I, if I hit the happy button, uh, I... I I'll bet you I feel happy, but you're telling me that animals can be happy uh, with this thing on and not necessarily happy with it off. Yeah, and, and for starters, we just gave them the name alert, happy, focus, calm, just because most of the people who take the underlying drug molecules, they say the same. So it's not perfect. I mean, a caffeine signal, if you have severe ADHD, caffeine mellows you. Yeah. So we've already We've already had that problem. People are like, I put the caffeine signal alert on and it does to me what coffee does, which mellows me out and makes me tired. And we're like, it's because it's not alert. It's caffeine, the digital imprint. So the, the, it's the adjective word that we're using. We're actually going to be moving away from that soon because it's not perfect to describe everything, right? But what we did see was when it, on video at these third-party um, CROs, clinical research organizations, the lab techs were actually blinded. So not even the lab techs could be suggested, suggested as to which signal was on which cage and even if it was a signal. They did have a control group that they were watching everything against. But over and over and over, they, they could clearly see the, the alert cages, the caffeine cages, jumpy, grooming nonstop, moving around a bunch versus the control groups, okay? Um, they could clearly see the melatonin cages, um, the, the mice all asleep in the corner, corner huddled together. They could clearly see, uh, the, the, um, the happy signal cage was probably my favorite one. Um, the mice were literally just a little swervy and, uh, they were kind of tippy side to side just a little bit with some of our stronger signals. Now, none of those are public, but the mild ones are. Um, and it was, it was very, uh, it was hilarious actually. And then the, this, the CBD signals for relax. Um, the, I remember clearly the, um, lab tech, she came up to the camera and she said, look at this five mice all splayed out on the ground with their paws, all four paws like this. And mice don't do that. By the way, if mice are going to go to sleep, they hunch over and they sleep right with their arms in together. Um, and she said, this is a sign of extreme muscle relaxation. I've never seen a mouse do this. That was the moment um, I, was, I was hooked. And I, the next three days later, I went to my grandma's house up in uh, Washington. And this was two years ago. I went to my grandma's house and she's in her late 80s, tons of pain and arthritis. She has terrible time sleeping. And I put that same signal on her, the relaxed signal. I told her nothing. I, did, I just said, Grandma, put this on. That's it. And 10 minutes later, eh, maybe 15 minutes later, she's up bouncing around, giving people hugs. She feels amazing. No pain. Uh, no soreness. Um, that night, she wore it again an hour before bed, and she slept 11 hours. And she hadn't slept more than five hours since like the 90s. And it would change her life. She used it. She still used it. She used it all the way until she recently passed a few months ago because she was in the last stage of her life. It, we think it extended her life, but she absolutely loved the product. And my grandpa, 
he gave a gave me a hundred thousand dollars the next day, and he said, "Whatever you did to Grandma, you need to do that with a billion other people, because you you've changed her life, and she's no longer in this miserable state. And she was she enjoyed the last couple years of her life. And uh, yeah, so that was those are the reasons why I'm hooked. This is why I'm in, man. Like this is the real reason why I care about this. Cool. All right, you and I both have aura rings on. Yeah, there we go. We're both holding them up. Uh, I was one of the early adapters of that big, giant, clunky thing. Yeah. Uh, we could. Our rates a friend with yeah. Orrin. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm going to tell me about what Aura Ring users have found out about your device, and I'll tell you my story from last night. But you first. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're seeing a, a, an upward trend in deep REM when people put their. Um, happy under their pillow. So there's two types of signals that we now have in the app for sleep. There's a bedtime routine, which is an, an uh, adenosine trigger to help get you into a sleepy state. And then there's a uh, melatonin deep sleep signal, which basically just emulates the imprint of melatonin. So um, people can play them for an hour. You can play them up to eight hours and you just put them under your pillow. Okay. Um, some people just wear them around their neck and then they take them off and go to bed. Once they're sleepy enough, you don't have to put under your pillow. It can be a pre bed routine. Some people, they just like clockwork. They wake up after four hours, no matter what they ever do at one in the morning or whatever. And then they'll throw it back on without the light. Cause you can turn the light off in the app. Um, they'll, they'll throw it on for another 20 minutes and then put themselves back into a, a sleepy state. Right. So those are the main ways people are using this. But if you track your Oura Ring stats, we're consistently seeing higher results, higher sleep stats, sleep numbers, deeper uh, deep REM is increasing. Depends on when you, people go to bed, light REM can increase. Sometimes it stabilizes, it stays the same. But if you can put somebody into a deep sleep earlier in the nighttime, uh, there's a lot of benefit to doing that. Um, and so with the habit people have, they put it by their bedside, they turn it on, they track their ordering stats, they're seeing a general upward trend. It's not every time. Some people worry, they, they just worry about having this, you know, so that might freak someone out. But usually if you put it under your pillow, you don't think about it, have a good night's sleep, and your aura ring stats are showing a 15% increase, right? 10%, uh, something up to 30%. We're doing a study right now with over 100 of our customers. I wish we were doing this in a month, but we're doing a sleep study with about 100 of our customers that have Oura Rings right now. And so uh, we're gathering data on them and their usage stats. So we're very excited about it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you my experience last night. I, uh, I said, uh, okay, smart guy, <clears throat> give me. Uh, I'm going to hit the relax, <clears throat> which I hadn't used. Uh, and I wore it for on relax for an hour before I went to bed. And... Uh, for some obscure reason, and I actually don't know why, my, my heart rate variability usually sits around, oh, 70 to 80, and hopefully those of you who know about this know what that means. But last week, my heart rate variability tanked down into the 20s, which it never does. Oh, wow. And yeah, and I went, whoa. And it could have been that I had just finished the final chapter of my upcoming book and had a deadline. Could be. Um, I usually don't get freaked out by those things, but could be. And my heart rate variability was, was coming back slowly. I was kind of in the 40s um, this past week. So this morning I get up and put on my aura ring, or I mean, look at my aura ring. And my heart rate variability was back, actually 77, back where it usually is. And I went, oh, that, you know, hmm, interesting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, it had a big jump. Now, was that uh, just chance that I'm now back and I'm relaxed, blah, blah, blah. But I thought that was worth saying an N of one that, yeah. uh, that, that clearly on my aura ring had a, had a big jump. Uh, I'll report back, but I, I thought that uh, you'd like to know that. It's just a data point. That's great. That's exactly right. 
Everybody has a million of them, and then hopefully over time you see the line going up. That's great. All right, let's talk about mental health since you brought it up, addictions. Uh, you obviously are high on this. Uh, do you have any anecdotes or clinicals about the utility so far? Yeah, so um, our parent company is doing the, the clinicals. Um, they're working on pain. They even have an anxiety uh, trigger they're working on as well. Again, they have to make the medical claims, right? We don't want to make medical claims because I don't want to sell you this for $50,000. We're just keeping it under general wellness. But general wellness can still uh, in support mental health um, to a, a large degree. And so what we are seeing is general mood um, enhancement all across the board. Now, some people come to us for better sleep. They're just, I just want this for sleep. They put it by their bedside. Some people want this just for stress. They, you know, whether it's PTSD, which we don't claim, but people buy it for that, whether it's, you know, military vets or people that are in a high stress job or people with little kids or whatever it would be, they want the relaxed signal, the calm signal, those types of signals to help them de-stress at the end of the day or before a stressful, uh, meeting or a bunch of errands or whatever it would be. Some people come to us directly for just energy. They're low on energy, they're struggling, they need a pick me up throughout the day. And and then the last one, big one is productivity. Okay. That's what our signals right now are, are gathering in terms of use cases. We are going to be moving into fat burning and, and appetite. Appetite suppression is a non-covalent bond, just so you know. Uh, so we're looking at that right now with Dave Asprey in his newest book, right? Fast this way. He is big on trying to see if we could use our technology for hunger. Um, we're looking into um, a vasodilator that increases blood flow. Again, our, our chief scientists in, helped invent, he led the team to invent Cialis. Yeah, so yeah. it's on the, on the docks. Um, I, can, I cannot confirm or deny if I've tried a signal such as that, but there is nothing out commercial right now. Um, we're also working on memory we're working on you know, dopamine type signals and ways to help the body. Now, we think that this is incredible for mental health. There's nothing in your body. There's nothing to get you chemically addicted. You may form a strong habit. We definitely have people using this for over a dozen hours, right? Especially if they use it eight hours a night. That's, they'll use it every night if it's helping them. So, but in my opinion, that's not an addiction. That's just a, a, a good habit like exercise and sleep and diet and spiritual work. So yeah, that's, that's what I think about the mental health space. Um, this is just the first product too, I should probably mention. We, we want to have a whole suite of products, whether it's, yeah, you know, yoga mats or something in your Tesla car seat or a, a work chair or a hoodie that you're wearing. We just were able to put this technology into like a ribbon technology and cloth. So imagine like a Lululemon polo. I mean, there's a lot that we're going to be creating over the next several years. The, the next big one is a, a sleep form factor. We're in talks right now with Chili Sleep. If your, your uh, audience has heard of Chili Sleep, I'm good friends with Todd Youngblood and his wife. Um, they run Chili Sleep. Uh, we're working on a, a mattress topper that can help you um, go to sleep and wake you up with uh, an alert signal when your alarm goes off. Um, and, and as well as blood flow and other things down the line. But there, it's like a mattress topper, like a, a bed sheet, basically. So there's going to be other ways to use this technology than just this um, this around your neck or your head. Now, it's cool. It's lightweight. It kind of looks like you're a tax collector if you put it on your forehead, right? Yeah, I, but, yeah, I wore it like that last night. And yeah, it, it looked it, like a, you know, some guy in Vegas. Some, uh, anyhow. Uh, now, you're, just to be clear, we're, we're not saying, you're not saying that you should stop all of your medication or this is going to replace any part of a treatment or health plan, right? Correct. Do not stop. I'm not a doctor. Um, now we do have a lot of doctors and functional health professionals giving this out every day. Um, psychiatrists and counselors love this, but no, please do not replace without seeking, uh, help, professional help. An MD should tell you if this should work or not for you. I'm not against, um, having it be a compliment to, Right? right? We have a lot of people that are, are on medication that use this to support it, right? So a good example is in the, in the FDA trials for the cancer studies for chemo, they tried our signal for chemo, which is not in this product at all. It's a different product, different business, same tech, but 
they tried chemo and then no chemo, just our signal. And we were very close, maybe 20% different, 10% different. If you do chemo and our signal, it was 40% net benefit over standard of care. And so that was a huge sign um, for a lot of people to start to think differently about this space. If you could enhance a medication or a chemical or a compound, that's great. If you want to replace you know, basic consumer products like a cup of coffee or a drink, great. That's not a medical thing. But I would never want anyone to stop taking a prescription drug and start taking us without seeking extreme medical help. Down the line, it might be different in 10 years. Let's talk again. But right now, we're, uh, we're just a, a consumer product. Okay, well, uh, there's, a, there's, despite all this, there are still a lot of skeptics out there. And uh, when this was, before this was released, there was a video that went to debunk your product. So, okay, how do you, how do you address the skeptics? Because, you know, they say this is a mind control device and, you know, you're losing all of your personal mind freedom, et cetera, et cetera. Come, uh, help us out. Answer, answer the questions. All right. Yeah. So we launched last February, we launched last February, but we didn't ship products until last August. And the moment we launched in February on, we had a Kickstarter program just, and we didn't need the money. It was just to kind of see if our funnels would convert and if what people would think about it. We didn't have all the science in there. We just said, what do you guys think about this? Well, they loved it. We sold half a million dollars of product within like a couple of days or it was like a week or something. Dave put it out. A bunch of people started telling everybody, well, we hadn't shipped one. No one in the public had ever even tried it. We had hundreds of people privately do it. Well, we got a lot of trolls. I'm talking like hundreds of trolls uh, and including, you know, some of the big ones, Thunderfoot in the UK, like they put hit videos out on us that got hundreds of thousands of views. This is terrible. This is fake. This is snake oil. And they had never tried it. They don't know the science. They didn't see our, our placebo controlled blinded study result. We didn't even put, publish them yet. And so, yeah, we got attacked. And uh, the main reason is, was because some of our competitors, we found out paid some folks to try to bury us at the beginning. But the truth is, I think it's helped us because people now are more intrigued. And then they go to our site and they find out everything. And they start seeing all the reviews. They start seeing all the studies. They were, and then we have a money back guarantee. And they're like, okay, there's zero risk of me trying this. So yeah, I, I don't like skeptics. You know, I don't like my company or my name drugged through the mud. That's very difficult. But at the same time, if you're getting your word out there and having a discussion with people, we do believe in our tech. We believe in our product. We've got 5,000 people using it right now that I don't know, random people all over the world. And it's amazing to see how it's helping their lives. And so over time, it's like any press is good press if you really get into it, unless there's some terrible thing that you've done. But yeah, if people are just arguing whether your thing works or not, it's like, hey, buy it. Watch what happens. Yeah, in fact, uh, you uh, sent me a, a little video and you also sent an email and I was actually very impressed. Uh, actually, I think when I activated uh, the, the ring or whatever we want to call this thing, uh, that, hey, you know, even I, uh, some of this, I, I, I feel pretty much right away some of this. I had to use it maybe three or four times before I noticed any difference. And, you know, I salute you for that, that, uh, hey guys, you know, I'm, I'm the CEO of this and I, it took me a while to get some of these signals. Uh, can you That's talk right. about that? What's, what's been the feedback of users? Is that true? Some people, bam, oh, wow, you know, that's like a, like a hit of two cups of coffee and other people go, eh, I didn't see anything. 20% of people, it takes, it takes the full three to 10 days, okay? So there's an entrainment level here, okay? These are not signals that are gonna knock you flat. You're not gonna get drunk or like super caffeine, sugar freak crazy. I'm not gonna be a sprawled out mouse. No, no. Um, it's not crazy, um, but some people, the first couple times they use, they don't feel much of anything, and their brain is trying to start to recognize what's going on, okay? You know, there's a very similar thing for anybody who's ever tried um, a mild psychedelic or, or, or um, a marijuana type signal, not signal, but if they take like THC or something, it doesn't work for like three times. 
Because sometimes your brain is trying to figure out what's going on. And there is a level of that with our technology and there's an entrainment factor. You have to use this. We recommend 10 days, 30 minutes a day. Try to at least try a specific signal or go sleepy alert, sleepy alert, you'll get it. That's my quick hack. Go sleepy 30 minutes, then alert 30 minutes, back to sleepy, but you'll start to see a change. Whether you're tracking you know, your, your heart rate, you're tracking your emotions, your feelings, just check in, you'll see. But our problem comes when people put it on for two to 10 minutes only, and then they're like, yeah, this doesn't work. Well, it's like, okay, some people just need some time. You gotta give it the, the full 10 days. My my chief coder, Sid, took him 33 plays before he felt the, the relaxed signal. 33 times. It took him months. He was so mad. <laughs> He's like, the other, the other ones work. This one it doesn't work, and it frustrates me. It took him forever. And then finally one day, boom, there it is. And now he feels it within two minutes. He got the entrainment. And so that's what the technology is. Until we ramp these signals up, which we're working on for blends and other things like that. But right now, you just got to go through the training. Use it like you would anything else that asks you to do an onboarding. And then you're good to go. So it sounds like you're going to be the emotional barista or the, the, the mixologist at the, at the yeah. bar. I mean, is that, is that what you're proposing here? Our, our chief scientist, Dr. Brian Mogan, on our side, the happy side, he is a, a PhD in um, brain mapping. Um, he studied monkey brains for a decade. I mean, this guy's one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. And um, computational mathematics, that was his PhD from UW. Um, he wants to change his um, title from chief scientist, uh, chief science officer to chief mixologist. Aha. That's, that's what he wants to be because think of, think of our signals now as ingredients, right? And we're gonna create blends and activities and routines to help you all throughout the day, whatever you want, whether it's emails, meetings, pre-workouts, sleep routines. Yeah, our, our goal is to create these blends and, and help people. And that's what gives us unlimited ability to help people. I, I even want to help you create your own routine. I'd love to have a Dr. Gundry daily routine. Here's what I love to do based on the things I'm doing during my day. And people could subscribe to it. I mean, that's, that's our vision here. Believe it or not, I, I'm already thinking of how I was going to tell you what I want to use your device for because uh, it's kind of in the next book and uh, your device may be the way to do this in a totally different way. So we need to talk. And, All right. And that's Let's a go. teaser, folks. Uh, yeah. Cause, Wonderful. Because a couple of your things I talk a lot about in the next book uh, for a totally Great. different purpose than even you think you going to use it for I love I love new collaborations I'm, I'm a win-win guy that's that's our goal here and it, actually think of this as t is like Intel you know how Intel put their chips in everyone's technology we don't want to have to manufacture a, a hundred different types of products for the world we, we want to partner with Chili Sleep partner with Apple partner with Tesla partner with companies and use this technology into what they're I mean we just, we were talking to uh, Lululemon the other day, okay? There's, I don't wanna be the guy that has 5,000 factories all over the world trying to make a million things. I want this tech to go into what everybody else is successful. So think of us as Intel. This is a simple product that people can use that's like the mobile version, but it's also almost like the iPod, the first iPod that came out in 20, 2001 a thousand songs in your pocket. Well, we're a thousand feelings around your neck, right? That's the start. And then we're just going to innovate and partner with people as we go. Ah, cool. Well, Scott, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, all right. Where do people find out more about you and get themselves a happy? Awesome. So yeah, um, we, we gave a gift to your audience, um, I believe. Uh, it's happy.com slash Gundry, I think. I, I'll, let's double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the, that's the link. So H-A-P-B-E-E dot -E com. The logo's a B for anybody who's wondering. Hap B, obviously. Dot com slash Gundry. You'll get the top discount. I think it's at least $80 off. Um, yeah, and that's the biggest one. So happy.com. You can check out the science page there. You can see reviews there. Um, if you want to see us on Instagram, it's get happy. Um, H-A-P-B, go to gethappy.com. I'm just the Scott Donnell, if you want to follow me. Um, but yeah, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you. 
No, thanks. It's, uh, and you, you can send it back, right? Oh, yeah. If, yeah. Trust me. We need the product. If you don't want it, I'll give you all your money back in a Starbucks gift card because we've got people lined up waiting for it. Oh, wow. Hear yeah. that, folks? It's your, it's your free Starbucks gift card. No. <laughs> and, but if you use this device, you may not be going to Starbucks as much. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, don't put that target on my back I yet. was going to say, I, mean, I better not say that. Oh, please go to Starbucks. No, they're not a sponsor, but uh, we love them anyhow. Okay. All right. Scott, great to talk to you. Yeah, we will be in touch. Uh, you know, I, I have great plans for you, Scott. Great plans. Um, you know, uh, leave Dave Asprey behind. We'll, we'll take you where we need to go. <laughs> okay. I know you're so, going to call him and tell him I, I said that now. <laughs> Since I'll let him hear it. I'll let him hear it live. All right. Okay. Very good. Hello, Dave. Love you. <laughs> All right, Scott. Hey. Take care. You too. All right. It's time for the audience question. Uh, Tiller Wills on YouTube says, after watching your videos on YouTube, I've started every morning since January 1st off with a shot of olive oil. He wants to know if this will impair his endothelial function. Hey, that is a great Question Tiller. Uh, I was actually a colleague of the cardiologist from the University of Maryland who first published that study showing that uh, olive oil uh, or a Big Mac would impair endothelial function in volunteers and that if you gave the volunteers a handful of blueberries before they had the olive oil, then the effect was prevented. Now, number one, that was a long time ago. And number two was plain old olive oil from the grocery store. And quite frankly, our research and other people's research has shown that the polyphenol content in commercial olive oil is virtually nil. And oleic acid, which is the major fat in olive oil, is basically an oil and it doesn't have any health promoting properties. But the polyphenol content of olive oil is the health promoting properties. And if you look at the major polyphenol in olive oil, hydroxytyrosol, you find the exact opposite, that it improves endothelial function. And I've even written papers and presented at the American Heart Association about the benefit of polyphenols in improving endothelial function. So the point of it is, get yourself good quality olive oil, first cold press, extra virgin, with a pressing date, and from a single origin, and believe it or not, it will help your endothelial function. But great question. I was there when that study was done at the University of Maryland, and I know exactly how it was done. But that's a great question. Time for a disclaimer. I want to make it very clear that while I like this product, it is not to be considered as a replacement for any medications or other recommendations made by your doctor. Instead, I think of, of happy as an additional tool in your toolbox to help you optimize your health and live a long, happy life. Finally, it's time for the review of the week. This week's review comes from Roberta Dunn on YouTube, who watched my interview. Bleh, let's do that one more time. This week's review comes from Roberta Dunn on YouTube, who watched my interview with David Robbenheimer and said, Thank you again for bringing us so much needed information on health and especially gut health. Your books, podcasts, and products have been so essential in changing the way I live, eat, and feel. I was 60 pounds overweight, 61 years old, and had so many health problems and took multiple medications. I found you almost four years ago and still eat and live the Gundry way. I am five foot six and now almost 65 years old and weigh 140 pounds and feel fabulous. Lots of energy off the meds and writing a food coaching book and cookbook so I can pay it forward. I also take your new prebiotic, probiotic and vital reds. You are one of my heroes and I am praying continuously for you and your wife and family. Thank you. 
Well, thank you. I really, really appreciate that, Roberta. As you know, and anyone listening knows, this is why I do this. I get up every morning. I see patients six days a week so that I can bring you life-saving information. And this is part of the process. And it's notes from you that makes me get up every day with a big smile on my face and a kid in a candy store. And thank you for writing. I really appreciate it. Why? Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. Thanks, Roberta. Before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. Mm-hmm.